Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be going over how useEffect works in React. So for those of you that don't know what useEffect is, useEffect is a hook in React. It's used to perform side effects in functional components. It's like the equivalent of component did mount, component did update, and component will unmount, except it's for functional components. If you don't know what a hook is, hooks are functions that allow us to manipulate the state of our functional components. Now, I don't want to waste your time, so let's get started on using useEffect. Now, I've created a bare React project using npx create React app and have removed all of the unnecessary files as well as clearing up the starter code in app.js. Now, I've gone through this process multiple times and have shown that in my previous videos, which I'll list in the card on the top right. Um, so with that started, let's start. So first, I've started up my server using npm start, and next, we need to import useEffect. So I'll just import useEffect with this. All right, so I have my server started and I have the Chrome window on the left with my editor on the right. Now, before writing any code, um, I'll first explain a bit more on useEffect so that you can follow along better. So by using this hook, we can tell React what to do with our component once it has finished rendering. And by default, useEffect runs both after the first render and after every update, but we can, however, change this by passing in a second value, which is an array. And um, for the example that I'm about to do, we won't need an array, but we will be using it in an array. Okay, so now I'll start writing down the code and then you can follow along and I'll explain what it does, okay? So use effect, and then an error function, and then pass in a empty array as the second value right there. Okay, so first of all, use effect will take in a function and whatever is inside of this function will be executed. And previously I stated that it runs both after the first render and after each update, but we can change this with this array right here, the second value. And if this array is empty, then it then whatever's inside of this function will only run one time. But if it has a value inside, for example, um, if we have a state variable inside of here, um, each time that state variable is affected, that's when it will run. But if we don't include this array as the second value, then the, um, whatever's inside of this function will run after the first render and after it. Okay, so now just like I said it, um, the use effect function will run after the first render and after each update. So let's test it. So first of all, we're going to create a counter and this counter will be affected by a button press, okay? So the initial value for it will be zero. And then whenever we press a button, it will increase by one. So to make this, we're gonna need use state. And if you don't know about use state, I'd recommend watching my video on it, all right? So I'm just going to import use state and then get started on creating this counter. So we're just gonna create a state variable called counter and set counter to use state and then the initial value is zero. And then over here, I'm just going to render counter and AP tag, so counter, and then it's gonna show zero over there. And then I'm gonna create a button that will um, set this counter to increase every time we press this button. So I'm just gonna put press me on this button. And then here, I'm just gonna do on click, uh, set counter to counter plus, one. So now I'm going to test this counter. So I'm just going to press this button. And then as you can see, each time I press it, um, this value is updating, meaning that the app is getting updated. And after each update, this use effect block will be executed. But since um, there's nothing inside of it, it's not going to do anything. So I'm just going to put something inside of it. So I'm going to put console.log render. Okay. And then I'm going to save the changes and then reload this page. Okay, and then I'm going to open up the console and then I'm just going to um, put it to the bottom right here. Okay, as you can see, it already um, logged render and that's after the um, first render for the component, but each time I press this, as you can see, it logs it multiple times. And the reason as to why it's um, logging this multiple time is because each time we press this button, this component is getting updated and this use effect block will run after it's updated. And since we have no array, it's just going to run after the first render and after every single update that gets uh, made to this component. So for this second example, I'm just gonna leave everything we have here for now. And then um, I'm just gonna create a button and another state variable, which will change from saying no and then say yes whenever we press the button, okay? So what I'm gonna do is create another state variable um, like this, so const word set word and then use state is equal to no by the default value okay and then i'm just going to render that value so um over here and do p 
and then word. So this is going to render no. And then I'm just going to have a button. So I'm just going to copy this for now. So I'll paste it here. And then instead of doing this, we're just going to do uh, set word to yes. And instead of this saying press me, I'm going to put change to yes. OK, and then whenever we press it, it's going to change this value to yes. OK, so our button is triggering the word variable to change to yes, which it should do. Now, whenever we press this or whenever we press the counter, um, the, this use effect block is executed. And that's because we have no array at the end. And if we have no array at the end, it will run after each update that's made. Now, what if we want to only run whenever this word variable is affected? So whenever this um, button is pressed. So to do this, we just need to pass in an array and then pass in word inside. So this will basically allow it to run each time this word is changed. So um, I'm going to refresh the page. And as you can see, it already logged render, but that's because the component had just rendered. But if we press this counter anymore, it's not going to render that. All right. And if we press this, it's going to render it. Now we know how use effect works. But we still have one last thing to do, and we need to try it out with an empty array. So if we put nothing inside this array, this use effect block will only run once, which is when the component is first rendered. So let's try it out. So if I put no array, I'm going to save the changes and then refresh this page. You can see that it only runs once. And if I press this, nothing's going to be logged. And if I press this, nothing's going to be logged. So to sum it all up, if we put no array, it will run after each update and after the first render. If we have an array with something inside of it, the hook will track it. And when something happens to it, um, it will run. But if we put an empty array, it will only run on the first render of the component. All right, so to sum it all up, use effect is a hook that allows you to perform side effects and functional components. If you pass in no array, the use effect block will run after first render and after each update update that gets made to the component. If you pass in an empty array, it will run only once during the first render and won't run when any other updates happen. If you pass in an array with values inside, it will track the values inside and run when the values are changed or affected. Now, I hope that you learned something. And if I went too fast, you can slow down the video or pause. I also apologize for the late upload. I've had exams this week and have been busy. But other than that, thanks for watching.